Shri Guruji and Mahatma. Welcome to our online teaching academy. Today we are going to discuss a new topic called as the data structure. Data structure. A data structure is a named group of data of different data types which stored in a specific way and can be processed in a single unit. So it is a named group of data and you are going to store a different data types into one specific way and that data you are going to process. A data structure has well defined operations, behavior and properties. Here are the elements of data. A raw data. A raw data defined as a raw facts and figures. They are simply values or sets of values. Whatever the input that we give, that is termed as raw data. If you are going to process those data, it will be termed as a data item. Data item represents a single unit of values of certain type. Suppose if I take a marks in the sense, those or all the marks of the student will be of certain type. That we call it as a data item. Data type and data structure. Data type refers to the type. It may be your integer, flow, character, string for the data which is represented in the memory location of a computer. It may be of any type. The type, the data may be of integer, the data may be of flow, or it may be a character, or it may be a string where you will store it in the memory of your computer. Data structure refers to the physical implementation or the arrangement of data. So a normally a data type which is nothing but what type of data that you are going to store it in the memory and that type of data we are going to arrange it in the memory which we call it as data structure. In other words, it defines a way of storing. So the same implementation, what type of, how we are going to arrange the data, how we are going to store it, how we are going to access and how we are going to manipulate the data stored in the data structure. So these are the different operations that we are going to perform on your data. Different data structures we have. It has been classified into main two types. One is your simple data structure. Simple data structures are called as your primitive data structures and they are built from the basic data types. So these are the, the primitive data types where this data types will be getting from the basic data types like integer, float, boolean and characters. So these are called as your simple data structures. Examples for your simple data structure is your array or linear list of elements. The second one is compound data structure. Simple data structure can be combined in various ways to form a complex data structure which we call it as a compound data structures. The compound data structures again has been categorized into two types. One is your linear, the other one is your non-linear. A data structure is said to be a linear data structure if the elements form a sequence of elements. If it is forming, we call it as a linear data structures. So these data structures are single level data structures. The examples are tags. Queues, linked list, these things comes under your linear data structure. In non-linear, data can be stored in multi-level structures. Example for this is your tree. So these are the different data structures. So a data structure has been categorized into simple data structure and compound data structure. 
the simple data structure which is nothing but is is the form of in the form of your list or in a arrays whereas your compound data structure is categorized into linear and non linear and in your linear we have stacks queues and linker list and in non linear we have trees now in this chapter we are going to discuss about the operations which are based on your stacks and queues this we are going to discuss a compound data structure of linear so what are the operations that you can perform on these data structures so data are processed by means of certain operations the data that we have stored can be processed which appearing in the data structure so insertion deletion searching traversal sorting merging these are the operations that you can perform on your data so here in this topic we are going to discuss about stack and queues in stack a stack is a linear data structure in which all the insertion and deletion of data values are done at only one end only one end only either insertion or deletion of elements can take place it is of linear data structures it follows a technique which, which we call it as lipo last in first out property so whatever the last element that has been inserted into the stack is the first element to come out insertion or deletion of stack can be done from top so we have only one end that end only we call it as a top insertion in stack is known as a push operation and deletion from your stack we call it as a pop operations peak refers to inspecting the value of the stack without removing just looking at the element in the stack overflow means a situation that is an error when one tries to push an element into the stack that is full so when the stack is full we cannot able to insert your values into the stack that we call it as a overflow underflow refers to a situation when one tries to pop or delete element from an empty stack suppose if i want to delete element from a stack if no elements have been present in my stack that is in my empty stack if i try to remove in the sense we call it as an underflow so here this is how the stack is being arranged the data is being inserted into the stack that is data or value will be inserted into the stack that operations during insertion the operation that we call it as push operation do and when you want to delete right so we call it as a pop that is during your delete we call that operation we call it as a delete operation or pop right so the data will come in and the data will move out which means the which of the data last entered into the stack that data that data will be the first element to go out which of the data we have entered into the stack that is last data that we have entered that is going to be the first data to go out so we are following lipo last in first out always your stack will follow last in first out technique so here you can notice that these are some of the examples of stack right stack of tables just by stacking that stack of chapatis or rotis or stack of coins let us we are stacking something so if an element comes into the stack that is the first element to go out from the stack so a stack operations we are doing so the insertion we are doing through your push operation the deletion is through your pop operations so where do we use the stack in expression evaluation that is to evaluate a prefix postfix or an infix expression if i want to calculate some expressions in the sense we need to evaluate that expression so there your application your stack works expression conversion the same way to convert from 
one form to another form. It may be from prefix to postfix or postfix to infix and vice versa. Syntax parsing. Many compilers use tag for parsing the syntax. That is how the syntax should be executed, right? So many compilers use the tag operations. Backtracking. If a problem has to be solved, right? So it can be used to for back traversal of steps if a problem in a problem solution. So that I can easily identify where my operations and working work. Parenthesis checking. Tag is used to check proper opening and closing of parenthesis also. It is used. String reversal. If I want to use to use to reverse a string also, I can use it for a stack operations. I can use function call. Stack is used to keep information about the active functions and subroutines. So you may be having many of uh, subroutines in a particular function. So to store which function uh, that the active function is, which function calls the other function based on that also, the stack operation works. So here or the implementation, how we are going to implement the stack operations in Python. So here we have peak. Stack of top, stack which is nothing but a list where that list will be referred here, where stack is a list, top is an integer having a value equal to length of stack minus one. Suppose if I have 10 elements in my stack in the sense, always my list will be referenced from the index value that is to 0 to 9, which will be referenced. So the length of your stack goes as 10 minus 1 which is 9 that is the topmost element in my stack will be written by peak operations in push stack dot append of item that is it is used to push item into the stack whenever insertion i am doing if i want to do an insertion into my stack in the sense i have to use append function to insert an element into the stack pop stack dot pop up. It removes the last value from the stack and returns it. So if I want to delete an element from the stack, I have to use the function called as pop. So here are the examples. See, now initially the stack is empty. Now we try to insert an element into the stack. So what operation we are doing? Every time insertion in the sense, it is push. If I'm deleting in the sense, it is pop operation. So I'm pushing the element into the stack. So initially the stack is empty. So we try to push element into the stack. So an element has been inserted into the stack, which is 24. Now the element, this will be referred by top. So always top will point the last element that you have inserted. Now we try to push 56. So top will be shifted to the next element into the stack. Next, push ho. So top is being referenced with the next element. Push 9. So this becomes your top. And push 2. And this becomes your topmost element. So totally how many elements we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So all the elements we have inserted into the stack now it is full. So furthermore, you cannot insert any other elements into your stack, which means that the stack is full. Now, if we want to delete element into the stack in the sense, we are following either insertion or deletion, we are following lipo, last in, first out. So which is the last element that we have inserted? Two. So your top is pointing to the last element. So that element you can able to remember. So pop up two. So now your top is pointing to the next element into the stack. If I'm removing this pop nine, so the top will be shifted to the next element into the stack. So every time top will be decremented by one when I'm doing the pop operation. When I'm inserting that top will be incremented by one. So and finally, your top is referencing to uh, 24. 
if I remove that, that is all the elements from my stack, I'm removing this, so it is stack is empty. Here. So here let us take this example in a program. So stack initially. So the stack operation we are going to do using the list in your Python. So we have created a list stack equal to 593. So already in my stack, I have inserted 5, 9, and 3. Now your topmost element is your 3. Now we are append. Append means what? Insertion. Insertion element into the stack. So we have inserted an element 7. So now your top becomes 7. Again we are appending the element. So your top is 11. So print the stack. So what is your output? It starts from the lowest element to the topmost element. Either the uh, uh, processing or displaying the contents may be through your forward direction or in a backward direction. So what are the elements that are present in your stack? 5, 9, 3, 7 and 11. Now we are going using the pop operation. That is we are going to delete the element. So which is the topmost element? 11. So we are going to delete the topmost elements. Once this 11 has been deleted, so the rest of the elements are 5, 9, 3, 7. Again, we are deleting one more element. So next topmost element is your 7. So the remaining elements are 5, 9 and 3. Now we'll execute the program based on the stack implementation. And we will we'll execute the program. First, we'll start from the main program. So initially, stack is null. That is, a list has been created. Initially, it is null. No, no elements have been inserted into the stack. Top equal to none. Why? Because no elements have been inserted into the stack. So initially, it is null. It is not pointing to any of the elements. So these are the operations that we are going to do in your stack. The push operation. Pop operation, peak, display, and express. So, ch equal to, which is nothing but, so which operation that you want to work. So, that you are getting the value from the user to execute the operation. So, if ch equal to one item, that is, as I'm going to do a push operation, I have to get the element from the user, then I have to insert into the stack. So, that element which is nothing but stack. Now we are passing the arguments stack and item, which means that every time that I'm getting uh, the elements from the stack, already my stack is empty. So I'm going to store it. I'm referencing that element that is my list and the element that I'm going to insert into the stack. I'll be passing it to the function and it is my receiving parameter as SCK and item also I have visited. So the next step is I have to insert. So for insertion, we'll be using append function, right? So the top is null, so the length of your stack plus one, which means that every time as we are inserting elements into the stack, we are incrementing the value of top. If my choice is two, that is pop of stack, that is the, all the elements from my stack, I'll be passing it to the pop function where in my pop function I'll check whether if the stack is empty in the sense I'll just return it as underscore otherwise I'll store the last element of my stack into the item then I'll check whether the length of stack is zero top equal to none suppose if I'm deleting all the elements in the sense my top becomes none otherwise my top will be incremented, sorry, decremented by one. So for every deletion of elements in your stack, top gets decremented by one. And whatever the element that we are going to delete, that item we are returning to the main program. In third option, peak, right? So peak of stack. Peak of stack in the sense. 
is empty we are checking if it is empty in the sense we, we are not going to print any elements just we are uh, printing it as stack empty otherwise topmost element we are storing it and return the stack of tops that is uh, it will just return which is the topmost element in your stack it will not delete the element it just returns the topmost element in your stack so for that we are referencing the top value and stack of top will be returned in choice 3 it checks the returned value is underflow in the sense it prints as underflow otherwise the topmost element will be uh, printed the fourth option is display right so in your display in the sense to uh, display all the elements in your stack if stack is empty again we are going to print it as stack empty top equal to length of stack minus length that is the topmost element we are referencing with the top element print stack of top so initially we are printing the topmost element and here in this for loop we are doing a backward direction backtracking uh, now we are doing and where we are going to print the using the backward direction we are going to print the elements in your stack and we are going to refer which is the topmost element in your stack also so these are the operations that will be working in your stack let us execute the program so these are the five operations now i'm going to go for push one the item is 11 again one item is 22 again one item is three so we'll go for a fourth option that is displaying stack so here are the three elements we have entered and first element is 11 second element is 22 third element so top is pointing to the last element that we have inserted now our choice is right three right three in the sense the element which is being referenced with the top that element is being written now we'll go with the choice as two right. so now we'll give the choice as two right so top pop item is 33 now we'll check whether the item has been removed or not will give the choice as 4 so here the 33 is the item that we have removed so what is the next element in your stack which is 22 which is being referenced as the topmost element in your stack so this is how we'll work with the stack operations thank you children to receive our online lessons please press the subscribe button and you will receive the latest updates